There he is. There he is. Ooh, still got a little jump in him. Nice smallmouth bass, man. <laughs> Beautiful bass in cold water, look at that. This time of year, late fall, when the water temps dip to around 50 degrees, it can be prime time for smallmouth bass as they winter up and consolidate real heavily in their winter holes. And that's the kind of fish you can expect, and it's a pretty cool pattern. Crawfish imitating baits like roller head jigs. This is a swing head jig. Crankbaits are dynamite. Anything that looks like a crayfish and is fished on bottom can absolutely be deadly. Let's get that girl back. that right there right on that little gravel outcrop another nice fish man they're still digging water temps are 50 degrees right now and these fish still got a lot of life in them you know, I'm fishing a, a mid-sized river in the upper Midwest Minnesota and river smallmouth location kind of depends based on when you're fishing in the fall these fish are gonna end up being in deep water areas to winter they like the protection from the ice cover. They want to be in somewhere out of the current. They want to be somewhere where there's a big food source and big cover elements like boulders or a tree. But the deepest water, oftentimes that means if, if it's an upriver environment, they're going to dump down into a reservoir back by the dam, some deep water areas. But throughout the fall months, there's a transition period when they're dropping down. And that's what we're doing today. It's mid-October. Water temps are 50 degrees. And we're keying in on points, on wood piles, rock, gravel, transition zones from soft to hard bottom areas that when these fish make their way down, they're able to stop, kind of like a pit stop to eat crayfish. And it's a crayfish pattern. Seems like you do best if you're fishing something on the bottom. Crankbaits, but the bill's gotta be digging in. This is a swing head jig. I'm just dragging it on bottom. Football head jigs, Carolina rigs. It's just gotta be on the bottom. You gotta fish a lot of spots, but once you find the kind of stuff they're sitting on, you can go keying on more spots like that. So if you look up ahead of the boat right now, I'm coming up on one of those unique spots. It's, it's a stopping spot. I don't necessarily think the smallmouth winter here because it's only you know, six to eight feet of water, but as they're making their way down to some of the deeper pool areas, it's the end of this wild rice bed, this big reed point, and it's hard. Right over here, I got this big channel that is a major current area, you know, this point, and you got the main river channel here, you got a side channel here, it just sweeps that bottom clean, so you got a nice hard bottom area where crayfish can live, and I feel it when I'm dragging bottom, and that's key. Um, when I'm in those hard bottom areas, I'm gonna feel that little jig head, I'm gonna feel that crankbait tick and cover. So you're looking for the five by five, small areas with lots of fish, whatever's on the bottom has what they need, it's usually rock, if you can have some wood down there too that's a huge plus and then if you're fishing relatively clean bottom like i am today a mixture of gravel and rock i'll just push up all the way through because i want to maximize hook sets i still do like fishing at texas post because you will run across certain cover elements down there there's going to be some grass there's going to be some wood that you can get snagged on and rig like this doesn't really reduce my hooking percentages. I mean, look how easily that plastic pushes down. And when it comes to line, fluorocarbon is a great option. I do like using braid this time of year. Um, it really lets me feel the bottom well with this football head style jig. And I don't have to set the hook as hard. I just want to tighten the system and then I can give just a nice firm hook set into the fish. It's a windy day, uh, just great bottom contact sensitivity with the braid to this style of jig head, which is constantly in contact with the bottom. So this is another one of those really good spots. Set up a little different than that last location, which was that point on the main river channel and had that secondary river channel. This is the mouth of a ooh, backwater bay. And I got two rice points coming out and I got a saddle in the middle. This is a natural outlet for a bunch of water back here. And main river channel is sitting, sitting right here. A lot of those fish in the wintertime don't want to be out in that main river current. So this allows them adjacency to that river current, which helps bring in food and oxygen. But they can just tuck in this deep saddle here and be pretty comfortable. Oftentimes in the fall like this, you start out with a little bit slower presentation in the morning. And we were fishing football head style jigs and just dragging it, just crawling it on bottom. And we came up to this spot. Now it's midday. 
It's a beautiful fall day. There, look at, there's another nice one. Beautiful fall day and the fish have turned on. And it seems like up north in that northern part of the country in the fall, when the bottom starts falling out in October and cold and you get a really nice day, like a beautiful, warm, sunny day where you're comfortable to be out here in a hoodie, it's a good time to put on a crankbait. These fish really turn on. Walleyes, muskies, panfish, bass, you name it. Just dumped them. That's okay, there's another one up there. Let's see. But beautiful days like this, you know, it's pretty common to start with a slow presentation in the morning, more of a finesse style presentation or just something slow, and then pick up with a little bit more aggressive tactic in the afternoon, like a crankbait. Could be a spinnerbait. There's a wad of them up there. That's what I was talking about earlier. When you find that five by five and it's it's right down the gut. It's right in the middle of this pass right now. Another beautiful fish. Just a great average size bass. Just a mouthful of DT. Let's get her back. Another beautiful bass. Awesome. Let's try over there. That's the beauty of a crankbait on a little bit bigger spot like this is the ability to make super long casts, get that bait to a diving depth, and then just slow crank it on bottom. It's actually in the strike zone quite a while, but the absolute imperative of this whole thing is selecting a crankbait that allows you to get down to the bottom where the fish are feeding. If you're not making bottom contact, you, know, you just don't catch that many fish. We've been here for about 20 minutes and I'm still casting and I'm still catching fish just by varying my casting angle. So we started working in from this side. I was casting this way. Then I dropped perpendicular to this gap here, the saddle, and casted this way. That was my best casting angle. Then I got over there, casted that way, and I was able to catch a few fish from each casting angle. I found out this was my best casting angle on this particular day for reasons I don't know, but you can really grind it out on a particular spot. If the crankbait bite dies, that's when I'll just switch up to one of the other presentations I got rigged on the deck. I'll drop the crankbait, I'll mix it up. I even got a spinnerbait rigged right now too, just because the fish seem like they're in a, a pretty good mood. Oop, there's one, just had a push. Just had a push. Oop, there we go, look at that, there he is. Nice, feels like a good fish. Just going easy with them and look like he's gonna jump. There he is, another beautiful fish, man. Look at that tank. Ooh. I love the fall. Everybody's out hunting, chasing ducks, chasing deer. <laughs> and look what you get. Gorgeous, man, look at that. Perfect, just a fired a long cast up there. Got that bait down to a good running depth where it was bouncing bottom. I'm actually gonna need the pliers on this guy. 